So you're thinking about doing van life, but you don't know where to park? I got you. This video is gonna be the top 27 ultimate parking overnight list. So you don't have to worry when you're out there in them streets. Before I lived in my van, I lived in my car and I stayed in a lot of different areas. Back then I stayed at a few of those locations, but over the years since I've been living in my van full time, I've stayed at almost all of the ones that I'm gonna tell you about today. There are a few new ones that maybe you wanna try, but let's get it going because there's a lot to get through. Number one, Walmart. Now you might think this is the old tried and true. Like my dad used to tell me, if you're ever tired on a long drive home, you can always pull into the Walmart parking lot and take a nap. Well, that used to be the case, but over the years, a lot of people ruined it. And so now not all Walmarts allow overnight parking, but the best way is to just call that specific location that you're in and just ask permission or walk in and talk to a manager and say, can I park overnight? If you see a Walmart that has a lot of RVs parked to one side, then that's typically a good sign that they do allow it but you should always check just to make sure because you don't want to get a tap on your window in the middle of the night also some walmarts they do not own their parking lot it's owned by the bigger shopping area so sometimes they don't have any control over that number two 24-hour grocery stores shopping centers and 24-hour restaurants now even though they're 24 hours there might be signs saying there's a limit to the parking that you can stay there for a certain amount of hours. So always check that out. But if it's a fairly busy location where people are coming and going, especially like fast foods like McDonald's or Taco Bell or whatever, different fast food restaurants that stay open 24 hours, if people are coming and going, people probably won't give you any hassle. Number three, 24 hour gyms or just gyms in general. I've parked at a few Planet Fitnesses overnight. Now, not all of them are 24 hours. So you have to make sure that you read all the signs. And there's plenty of other gyms that you could probably get away with parking there overnight, especially if you have a membership there. And while you're at the gym, you can get a good workout, fill up your water bottles and get a nice refreshing shower. Number four, casinos. I like parking at casinos because they're 24 hours. There's always new people coming and going. And usually the parking lot is pretty big. And there's sometimes a designated spot for larger vehicles like RVs and higher top vans and stuff like that. So I think it's pretty welcoming and I like the vibe at casinos. Number five, truck stops and gas stations. I've tried to stay at a couple of truck stops, but it didn't work out for me because one said I couldn't stay there overnight and the other one had signs limiting it to 30 minute parking. But I do know plenty of other van dwellers, vehicle dwellers and nomads that have stayed at truck stops and they love it. You could also stay at gas stations. If you were filling up, you can go in and ask the attendant, hey, I'm tired, I'm traveling. Do you mind if I just park here overnight? And a lot of them are gonna say yes because they're there anyways and it's just coming and going. Also, a little side note is that a lot of gas stations have uh, the water spigots on the side of the building and you can also ask if you can fill up your fresh water while you're there. But the only downside to truck stops and gas stations is the noise because especially at truck stops, there's gonna be trucks idling pretty much all overnight. And it could be pretty noisy, trucks coming in and out, cars coming in and out. And if you're a light sleeper, that might not be ideal. We just talked about truck stops, but you know what I want you to stop and do? Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and throw a like on this video. Ow! Number six, car dealerships, mechanics, and auto parts stores. Whatever model of vehicle you have, you can typically go and park at that type of dealership. So for example, my van is a Chevy, a Chevy Express. So I could roll up into a Chevy dealership and go to the service center and just kind of park my van around there. They really kind of wouldn't know if you were there to get service or not. You could go to a different mechanic shop because they're working on a lot of different cars. If they have a parking lot or street parking and you just park around there kind of nearby, a lot of police or parking enforcement probably won't worry about your car or van being there. And then similarly to that is auto parts stores. Your car may not really look out of place if you park there, especially if you do need a part or new windshield wipers or something and you go in and you get it and then you're like, I'm traveling and I'm kind of done for the night. Do you mind if I park in your parking lot? I'm pretty sure that a lot of a lot of people will say yes because it's no big deal. Number seven, rest areas. I've stayed at a couple rest areas, but the last one that I stayed at was so loud that I really didn't get a great rest. So really take that into consideration because if it's a rest stop and the regular car or van parking is next to the trucks or RV parking, it could be pretty loud. Trucks coming in and leaving and a lot of them keep their engines idling because they're trying to stay cool or warm depending on the season in their rigs. So keep that in mind, but rest stops can be great because they have toilets. Sometimes they have refreshments. Sometimes they even have a water fill up area or a dump station. So they could be really awesome. 
I will say in certain states, a lot of the rest areas have shut down or there's signs that saying no entry. So that's kind of a bummer. And the other thing is that I've noticed in some states, the rest areas do have time limits like two hours, four hours, eight hour parking. And if you're there at like six in the evening and eight hours goes by, you're gonna have to leave in the middle of the night. So really take the signs into consideration. Number eight is kind of like that. It's a highway pull off. I don't think I'd ever do that, but I do know nomads that have done that. They just see a, a highway pull off like a scenic view or something like that and they park there and that's fine it just depends on the road that you're on because if it's a busy road i don't feel comfortable parking where there's cars driving by pretty quickly and the van is shaking or whatever but there are some pull offs that are kind of on a side road or kind of on a curvy windy road through the mountains and if it's level it could be a really awesome spot to park and a really beautiful view to wake up to in the morning number nine park and ride or ride share parking lot this is one of my favorites because cars are parking dropping a car off and jumping in the van or car with another person so people are leaving their cars there already so it's free it's safe it's awesome and usually they don't have a patrol or a security rolling around giving tickets or anything because they know people are dropping their vehicles off to ride with somebody else number 10 is probably my favorite of all but i've had some comments that people are like you shouldn't do that but i don't care because it works for me you shouldn't do that when you find something that works as a nomad go ahead and stick with it don't worry about what other people are saying but number 10 hotel parking lots not like fancy hotels or like crappy motels or whatever but these are like mid-level hotels hilton marriott comfort inn and suites holiday inn and things like that they're typically parking lots mid-level price hotels where you don't have to pay for parking and there's typically no security guard roaming around giving out tickets or anything like that now i've heard a lot of people say no when i check into a hotel i have to write down my license plate number and my name and all these things yes many hotels do that and that was the specific reason why i didn't park in hotel parking lots for a long time but then somebody in my comments was like hotel parking lots sounds like that's not going to work but i've stayed at hundreds by now of hotel parking lots so it does work i've only gotten a knock on my van one time even though they ask for that information at the front desk they just keep it on record if something happens but a lot of times they don't check on the cars and when people are coming to stay at hotels they're coming from different states so if you have a different license plate it's fine and when you stay at a hotel you can invite guests over and they can come into the parking lot and park and go into your hotel and even though you're not a customer specifically at that hotel at that time you can still park there and this is my number one rule as long as there's multiple open parking spots so you're not taking away parking from guests that are staying there if i go to a hotel parking lot and it's pretty well parked up i just move on to another location it's no problem but if you're going to go to a hotel parking lot get in get in late at night be quiet go to sleep and leave in the morning and make sure there's abundance of spaces for other people and a lot of hotels do have free breakfast but I urge you, please do not go in and steal the free breakfast. I know it's tempting. I know it's like, it's free, but it's not free. You're not a paying guest. And it's really not cool because there are people that are paying for that. And we don't want to give nomadism or vehicle dueling a bad name. Number 11 is the Cracker Barrel. I love the Cracker Barrel because not only do they have great food, but they're so warm and welcoming when you go into their restaurant and so welcoming to people that have rvs and camper vans and the like they even have marked out spots where people can park overnight i love that i think more businesses should do that because their parking lots are already empty at night so why not be welcoming so i love cracker barrel most of them do allow overnight parking for campers and camper vans and rvs and you can look on apps like iOverlander to just make sure but sometimes they don't so you might want to ask if you go in or call and just make sure that you can park there overnight number 12 is city parks now i haven't had the best luck with city parks but there have been times where there are no signs around city parks so you can park in their parking lot or even on the street around the park and it would be a great place to park because you're in a really pretty scenic view and you can go hang out at the park until you go to bed but there are a lot of cities where some of the main parks are pretty sketchy and there might be some people walking around at night so it just depends on the area so stay cautious number 13 is marinas or small cruises so in my last video i talked about paid parking spots and one of them being small airports or airport park and rides park and flies 
but this is similar but usually the marinas where there are boats a lot sometimes people even live on their boats so the parking lots are usually pretty open and pretty free to be able to park there so marinas are good or if you're taking a like a small cruise not like the big jumbo crazy cruise line because those will probably be paid parking lots but with smaller cruises where you're doing like a dinner cruise or something like that, they might allow overnight parking in their parking lot, especially if you paid to take that little cruise. That'd be a fun little outing. But even if you didn't, they usually will have a parking lot for people to park there. Number 14 is another favorite of mine. And this was my go-to when I lived in my car is residential neighborhoods and apartment complexes. A lot of people shy away from residential neighborhoods. And I do understand why, especially if you're in a large van or a van that's maybe not as kept up because some of the residential areas have neighborhood watches or neighbors that aren't really happy with people coming in there and parking that don't live there. But if you roll up to a neighborhood and it looks like just people have just random cars on the street and it's no big deal and it doesn't look like a neighborhood watch fancy type situation, there's no problem on parking on residential neighborhoods because who's anybody to say that you're not a friend visiting another friend in their house? So neighborhoods, I loved parking there when I was in my car because I didn't stand out, stand out at all. Even in my van, I've parked in many residential neighborhoods and I didn't have any problems. Even in apartment complexes, if they have open spaces where it's not covered and there's no number on the ground, then there's no real problem with parking there. Now, a lot of apartment complexes do get parked up pretty strong like they don't have a lot of open spaces so stay away from those because you don't want to take away from residents that actually live there but if there's a huge apartment complex and they have a lot of open spaces then i don't see any problem with parking there also on a side note if it's a gated community you can typically go towards the time when people are getting off work and a lot of apartment complexes just keep the gates open or if not you can just usually follow somebody and i'm not just saying break the law and all these things but i'm just saying if you can't find any other spots and you want a safe place to park at night, apartment complexes could be a good bet. Number 15 is construction areas and out of business businesses. So circling back to residential areas and neighborhoods, there's gonna be places that are fully in the construction mode or even certain houses are under construction. And especially if you have a van that doesn't look too suspicious, there's nobody living there. So you can usually park near those areas. Now, construction workers do start super early in the morning. So you would wanna prepare yourself to get there kind of late at night and leave early in the morning, but don't park right up in the construction zone. But if there's construction areas, then people usually, usually aren't checking for people parking overnight. And that's similar to businesses that have gone out of business. Now it could look a little more suspicious in those areas, depending on where you park. But if there's a business or a business center or mini mall or something that's kind of has a few stores open and a few stores not open, then sometimes you can just park there with no problem, especially on the side of the store or towards the back of the store. And they really probably won't say anything because nobody's really coming into that business anymore. Number 16, which is similar is business and industrial areas. So these are active working, companies that are kind of tucked away from residential areas. There are places like mechanic shops, window tinting, windows, air conditioning companies, just industrial type businesses that are not franchise restaurants and things like that. And typically in those areas, there's plenty of parking around there. Try not to park in their parking lot in front of a specific business, but usually there's parking on the street near those businesses and in the industrial areas. And they're usually pretty quiet. So it's a good peaceful night's sleep. Number 17 is Cabela's, Bass Pro Shop and Camping World. I lumped them all together because they're kind of the same concept, but you can check apps like iOverlander or, or Campendium to see if there's a Cabela's or a Bass Pro Shop in that area. And if so, and their parking lot doesn't have any signs, then you're usually pretty good to go. If you feel a little bit nervous about it, you can go in and ask and just make sure, but typically they are pretty welcoming for RVs and camper vans and vehicle dwellers. Number 18 is Home Depot and Lowe's. Now, not all of them do allow overnight parking, but there's a few that do, and I've stayed at a Home Depot before, and it was awesome because they do close at a certain time, and I stayed over by the garden center, kind of tucked away towards the back, and it was a very peaceful night's sleep. There are people working overnight, like loading and unloading, so it was a little bit noisy at times, but not so much that I couldn't sleep, but it was really nice, 
you can check and just go in and ask customer service, hey, do you allow overnight parking? And they'll let you know right off because I've asked a few other Home Depots and Lowe's and they were like, no. It's a hit or miss with them, but if you find one, then it's usually, it's a good night's sleep. Number 19 is for the adventurers or the outdoorsy people out there. This is trailheads. Now, some of them do have signs that say no overnight parking, but if you find one, where there's not any signs, then it's an awesome place to park because you can go there later at night. And when you wake up, you're right at the trail to go hiking. And it's super convenient to just wake up, get ready, and then take a hike, literally. <laughs> Number 20 is also for those that love the outdoors. This is BLM, which stands for Bureau of Land Management and National Forest Land. There's plenty of videos on YouTube telling you how to find these locations, but they're usually tucked away in the desert or in the forest or in a really beautiful place and some of them have fire rings and it shows you like where you can park and where you shouldn't park and there's all kinds of different things that you should know about parking in those locations which is called boondocking or dry camping and it can be really awesome and really peaceful and beautiful and typically this is what people think of when they think about van life or vehicle dwelling so if you're the kind of person that likes to get away from people and cities and everything then this will be the thing for you but there are rules typically it's you can't park in one location for more than 14 nights but check that out for yourself but it could be a really good option 21 is church parking lots not all churches allow this but some are really welcoming to those that want to stay in their parking lot overnight i would definitely ask first of all just go in and ask the pastor or somebody that's working in the church hey i'm traveling is it okay to stay here overnight and just see what they say sometimes they will say no because of liability issues sometimes if they have allowed this in the past and it's been taken advantage of they will say no because we've had some really bad incidents on our property so definitely be respectful of that I personally think more churches should open their parking lots and i do know of some churches that have partnered with city officials or city organizations to have parking programs but those are typically for those that are truly homeless and don't have a lot of other options so if they have a parking program and it's set up for that then don't take that away from somebody that doesn't really have any other options if you're just traveling for the fun of traveling 22 is another of my favorites and this is hospitals now I hesitate to say it's one of my favorites because I don't want everyone to be going and parking in hospital parking lots, especially if they have a smaller parking lot. But if it's a big hospital and they have lots of spots, then there's really no problem of parking there because people are coming into the hospital all the time. Now, if you park close to the emergency room, there's gonna be ambulances and sometimes they'll have their sirens on. So that could be very startling in the middle of the night. But for the most part, the hospitals I've stayed at have been very quiet. I didn't have any problems and there was lots of open spaces and it was a great night's sleep the other perk to staying at hospital parking lots is that in the morning you could just roll up into the cafeteria and have a nice breakfast and cup of coffee number 23 is the cemetery or funeral homes funeral homes are a little iffy because it is an actual business and they might not want you to park in their lot after hours but for cemeteries I mean, typically they're open and you can go visit graves anytime you want for the most part. And usually there's street parking around the cemetery that's pretty well open. And sometimes they do have a parking lot for cemetery visitors. Now, always check the signs for that. But if you're going to a cemetery, it's pretty much going to be a peaceful night's rest as it is for those that are staying there long term but if you're nervous or have fear of the dead or, or zombies or whatever then it might not be a peaceful night's sleep for you because you're probably gonna be too anxious but nobody's nobody's coming nobody's coming out of their grave so go there have a peaceful night's sleep number 24 is a self-serve car wash now i'm not saying to stay in the bay where you actually spray down your vehicle and wash it down i'm saying that usually behind that is where you can like vacuum out your car or van and you could probably park back there or on the side of the self-serve car wash it just depends on the location but if you go there later at night park there and leave earlier in the morning i don't see why staying at a self-serve car wash wouldn't be a hit plus in the morning you can get a nice car wash and you have a fresh smelling ride for your journey number 25 is a city welcome center people sleep on welcome centers they, they're there for a reason they're there to let you know all the things that's available to do and see and eat in a specific town or city they love when people come in and ask for 
pamphlets, brochures, tips, and different things that they can do while they're in that city. Usually they're very nice and welcoming. So if you say, I'm traveling here for the next couple nights, would you mind if I parked in your lot tonight or tomorrow night? Sometimes they'll just say, sure, no problem. And sometimes they'll be like, no, we're not allowed to do that and that's fine. But it doesn't hurt to ask. And along those lines, number 26 works alongside with the Welcome Center. So when you're at the Welcome Center, you might get tips to go on a tour like whitewater rafting, a food tour, an art walk, or all kinds of different tours. So if you sign up for one of those tours and talk with the tour guide, at the end of it, you might be like, hey, I'm traveling or I'm a van lifer or whatever you wanna say, would you mind if I parked in your lot tonight? And if you've made friends with them, then they might be like, sure, no problem. So that could be another great option. And number 27 is your job. If you are the type of nomad that still has a traditional stationary job and you're in good with the boss and you let them know, hey, I'm trying to save money so I'm living in a vehicle or I travel on the weekends or on my vacation time, I travel in my van or my vehicle, then they might be like all for it. They might even be excited about your journey. And they'd be like, yeah, park in the parking lot. We don't care. And especially if you are friends with a security guard as well, then you're made in the shade it's no problem i think that's an awesome option to do that now if you're not sure how your job's going to take it by you telling them that you're doing this type of lifestyle then don't even go down that path because you don't want to make waves for your income but if you still have a job in one particular location it could help relieve so much stress than trying to find parking every night now that's 27 solid places that you can park overnight. So I don't wanna hear any excuses about, I can't do van life because I'm afraid I won't be able to find parking spaces. No, no excuse now. You have 27 different options that are pretty much tried and true. I've stayed at almost all of these, probably at least 20 of these I've stayed at and had no problems. I've only had the knock a couple times, but that's just part of van life. And until next time, bye for now. If you're ever tired on live if you ever try no stop now not all warm not all warm this is gonna piss me off if you're rolling up to get sometimes they have refreshment oh so you can take that you can take it that so you can around the parking around the or pan or can or can pet where you spray down your van or car or and this applies for cat Snack time. Snack time.